Hello, hello, and welcome. I am your host, Athena Sai. I am an oracle and a wisdom keeper of the Blue Rose Codex, and this is the Rise of the Womb Oracle Summit, and I am so excited for my dear friend Roberta to be with us today. She is our speaker today, so let me go ahead and introduce her. So Roberta Robbins weaves her sacred wisdom and medicine by supporting, nurturing, and mentoring others in reclaiming their own sacred essence and path in the world. She provides opportunities for others to journey deeply into themselves, where one can feel safe and supported to explore their soul's well-being and their cosmic soul light. Her hope for everyone is that they will remember, reclaim, and embody their personal power and their conscious awareness they are limitless quantum energy and source creation. Roberta is registered and certified in many areas of spiritual and holistic well-being, including spiritual mentor, intuitive life course co coach, excuse me, shamanic practitioner, and teacher of metaphysical studies. This, along with her exploration of sacred lands and working with hundreds of people over the years, has supported her to witness and allow her own sacred medicine to really emerge. She has worked diligently to embody her soul's path and connect to her own source light and wisdom. Roberta's mission is to inspire, empower, and guide others to remember, reclaim, and embody their own infinite soul love, wisdom, and sacred medicine. She comes from over a 25-year background as a regulated healthcare professional and a spiritual and mental health therapist. In 2016, she started to move away from her healthcare career to allow more space to integrate and share the wisdom that she had gained from other metaphysical and spiritual fields. Her other studies and trainings are as a spiritual director, holistic, holistic soul coach, spiritual medium, channel and shamanic healer and guide. And she applies her trainings and wisdom to assist others in embodying and remembering their own sacred soul essence. So welcome, Roberta. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. It's so lovely to be here. It's always nice that for you and I to connect and uh, have wonderful conversations. Yes, yes. And so as I was kind of like dreaming up this, I know we, I had you on my Dragon Dreamscape, little mini podcast on my YouTube. And then I was like, there's something else. There's like fairy stuff because we could talk forever. I mean, literally we could talk forever. And so I'm like, okay, the say you want to be present. And when we talk about this, the womb oracle, right, that feels to me someone who is in balance with the elements in balance with all beings from all realms from all worlds and so I just thought it would be perfect to talk a little bit more about your travels talk about um, these portals of potential and really tapping into the the fae and, and whatever else energy wants to come forward today we're not we're not just ex you know it, nothing's off limits really <laughs> so I think the first question I really want to ask you is when did you first feel or or hear the call of the fairy realms uh, I would say that would be right from being a kid uh you know growing up in the country uh, I was always out chatting with nature spirits chatting with the fairies um you know I don't know if I really you know, put everything in such a category of, of various things when I was younger, but I just knew they were there. Uh, these, these nature spites, these little ones, uh, speaking, playing, talking, I could feel them, sense them. Um, and so that's, that's always kind of been there along with not only, you know, fairies, nature sprites, the elementals, animals, all that, but also portals, uh, portals are a big thing for me. Um, and just owning that over the last few years that, you know, I, I have seen portals for like, since I was a kid too, they're a little more freaky when I was a kid, because you know, the energy from them. Um, but also, you know, when you're working with um, things in the, what one would call the unseen world, those can feel a little freaky, but I wouldn't say anything with the nature sprites and spirits um the fairies felt uncomfortable when I was a kid they were very playful they were friends yeah I love that and I can relate because I can remember back 
you know, when I was a kid and my pretend friend, you know, like I would, I would, I would talk to them and, and I didn't understand like what it all meant. I just thought, Oh, okay. I'm just, I have an imaginary friend. Um, but now as we, as we get to look back, it's like, Oh, it was something so much more than that. And the magic of that innocence of the child, right. And the innocence of being able to connect and not having that, that veil, like, you know, that was so heavy of amnesia upon us as young kids. It's like, Oh yeah. Like we're opening that up more and more. So I'm so glad that you're talking about that. So, you know, I know that like for me personally, I feel like the Fae are really here and the plant medicine kingdoms and the animal kingdoms, they're here to really support us in so many ways. So why do you feel like the Fae, the animals, you know, the lands, why do you feel like this, this consciousness or this support is really rising right now? And how do we embrace that? Ooh, big questions, right? Uh, <laughs> why do I think it's rising? Why do I think people are noticing and speaking about it more? Those kind of things. So um, I think we're, just, we're, you know, people are awakening more that veil, that, that amnesia that you talked about, like when we're kids, we don't have all the stuff on us yet. So we can see and feel, and some of us stay with it. Right. And usually those that we see, we see through all adulthood and we typically are going into healing and work and that within those realms. So I think more and more people are starting to, to awaken within their intuitive abilities to see beyond uh i think the veils themselves are definitely becoming thinner in themselves so it's making it easier for everybody not everybody but a lot more people um i think adults you know through their healing and their journey work themselves they're starting to become more safe feel more safe to go back and explore these parts of their their selves and and i work with people and i you know i see that part when i'm uh working through some of those fears and blocks that were put up when they were younger, working and seeing certain things, and then they closed it down for various reasons. I see people willing to come in and to work through that, to, to move those blocks and those fears and, and start seeing. And so more of their, their own magic, right? The more soul self starts coming in that they can see more than this 3D human realm uh, life that we've put ourselves in. So I think all that's there's a thinning and people doing the work and things are getting more strong within all of us. Our intuitive gifts, our abilities to see beyond, right? Our 3D world. And um, with the world itself, I think when it comes to things like in, we'll just keep call it the un, more the unseen world, which is fays and fairies and the dragons and our, our guides and the past on love was like, there's a whole what's beyond that. I think that's all rising right now because we're changing the world is changing and they know we need to come back to them they need to come back to us there needs to be a bridge uh walls are coming down right veils are coming down and beyond even this earthly realm those all those things are kind of almost here with us we also know this in the cosmic realms too all of that is opening up too so we have our earthly realms which i know we're talking a little bit more about here on this call but we have all that cosmic star life galactic uh wisdom and uh, messengers and help and support all that's being opened up and revealed and people are feeling more safe okay to talk about these things because you know even myself you know just a couple a couple years away from 50 I can talk about fairies it may sound like a childhood thing um and dragons but it's not I think we're breaking down some of these things that seem mm, childish fantasy and just it's not fantasy just good word yeah fantasy yeah. and you know and it's like it's okay that we talk about this this isn't just fantasy just not our childhood we're reclaiming all parts of ourselves which means we're reclaiming those parts but also like i said they are waking up and saying ha we need to be seen we need to let the human beings know we're here and we talked about dragons before on a call and they're really waking, waking up those energies and that too, but also the elementals, which I believe the, you know, the fairies, the fae, they play, they're part of the elemental spirits and realms, right? 
they live so closely in that harmony and balance. And we what something that's really easy for us to go to as humans is plant medicine, right? The healing, the properties We're we're more connected there, but that's a pathway and a doorway that they're nurturing. So, so many reasons and possibilities. Did I answer all that part of the question? I feel like there was yeah. another one. I think there was another question in there. No, you did great. And and that's the call that I keep hearing too, because, you know, I, I, I do ceremonies with um, cacao and I do, of course, my essential oils and herbs. And, you know, I'm also doing blue lotus, a lot of those ceremonies now. And I, I feel like the more I connect with that, like, you know, I'm one who can see beyond and I can hear, you know, if I'm really being present and I can communicate, but when I bring in those, those natural elements it just takes it up a whole other layer a whole another notch and it's um it's been really cool to to do that and you know part of this is like like you said we're breaking down barriers we're breaking down walls we're talking about things that you know in the past people may have looked down on us or you know even in past lives you know we were hunted and hurt and killed and tortured because of our gifts and and now it's like like you said we're really reclaiming that and we're like you know what we know who we are and we know because of this inner knowing and this heart felt desire to make changes in our world and so we have to share these stories and I feel like that's why you know all of us are gathering for this summit and for all the other summits and things that are happening and containers that are happening and ceremonies that are happening it's because we need each other we need our stories we need to continue to to web this uh or weave this web of life and I'm just so glad that you are are part of it because I just I love your medicine I love what you do and um yeah, it's just amazing. Thank you. And, you know, we talk about like how we bring this in, right? Like how we're, I'm sure everybody that's here coming in for these conversations, we are all doing this in different ways. And part of me is that travel, going to places that are, I feel it, uh, I touch it, you know, it's like, right, they are more easily here than in North America. And, um, in doing whatever work we need to do with that to help awaken and bring that medicine back and to, to support the bridge between the worlds. So I think probably most of us here on the summit are doing that in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about portals because I am someone who can feel and sense portals. And then when I journey, I often can see them. Um, not necessarily when I'm walking on the lands, um, but like when I'm in meditation I will go places so let's talk about what are portals portals and and how are they assisting us well portals I mean they show up like regular doors in many different ways right they're doorways they're pathways they're to other places realms um and yeah you can get them in your dream time you can get them in your meditation space and then there's ones that are um, they're here <laughs> around us and they show up in different ways. Like even mirrors are portals, um, bodies of water, uh, can be portals to, and there is an energy and a charge to them. Um, and then there's the ones that they are part of the natural world that bring us down, say like, uh, a bottom of a tree that has that entrance in, right? Some of them are portals in. Those are very common in fairy round worlds, right? Especially hawthorn trees and various things. Those are the the gateways between the worlds and the pathways, especially for the weak folk, the wee folk, and and that. And then and there's there's ones that are. Um, I think they move. I feel like they some of them move around on us and then there's ones that have been placed and they open up at certain times and I feel like they're more galactic uh cosmic ones and how they present to me um you know I can feel them I, if they're in a in a body of water uh I can see down through if I journey or just connect that energy they can I can see where they would want to take me or how it connects to other lands so my last trip to Ireland over in, in um, 
at the Grange Stone Circle, there is Lake Kerr that's nearby, and there's actually a portal from that lake right to that stone circle. Like, and they're they're a bit of a distance from each other, but you know, in the same kind of area, but there is a bit of a, they're not right, right, right beside each other, right? So there's a bit of a distance, but there was like a total portal running through the lake over to the stone surf circle and back and forth. There, and then you have like certain ones between certain trees and you have one certain between certain rocks that they've placed, like there's different ones. And so I can feel them. I can see them. I can intuitively travel in as a kid. The ones that would freak me out would be a, it's almost like a swirly. I always, there's this one that really freaked me out as a kid. Uh, it was across the road. I lived in the country and over into an apple orchard. And, it, and this apple orchard was then surrounded by woodland. And I always remember walking down the aisles of the trees, apple trees, towards the woods. And you just get this feeling. I was like, what is down there? There's something in there. And so you can energetically feel the energy changing and sometimes you can see a shifting of the uh, what's there the, the energy the how do I say the shifting of the energy what you're looking at is in you know there's something moving it's in almost something. like that that whole mirage kind of feeling where it's like the waving or the rippling and you're like there is something <laughs> or you get that weird like glimmer right that glimmer that happens yeah I've, okay. I've, I've experienced that a couple times you know, and some feel good. Some don't feel good. And that's just the reality. There are some to go through, some to just be aware of. They're not for you. They're for other things. I believe portals should be respected. There should be a wisdom, uh, a discernment. Um, in certain ones, you definitely need permission. Um, if you're being called to certain ones, there's usually a reason, but you got to be able to know. That's when we know, as we know and heal ourselves. And we know those energetics in ourselves, we can then work and understand that. And especially if we're working with our guides and, and that too, because they can give us some help and support with them. Um, so also in, as a shamanic practitioner, you know, we do journey work and we teach people how to do journey work. And there's portals within your worlds to get you to your other worlds. There's crystals that you can use and symbols and various things to create portals for yourself to access certain ones very fast and quick to your other realms. So there's like so many different kinds of portals out there. And the more I honor that, my honor that I, like even listening to myself right now, I'm like, well, heck, Roberta, you know a lot about portals. Do you hear yourself, you know, and I can see them, right? And I can feel them. And um, I think this is important as it's becoming more easily talked about, you know, that we're not crazy. And obviously people are going to be watching the summit and tuning in. You're probably going, this is really cool. At least this are like, oh, I want to hear more. Or there's something waking up in, inside me. And I think with our veils getting um, thinner and where we're going, we're, we're connecting to way more than just this 3D world, the matrix, and we're breaking through, right? So the more we attune and line and know ourselves, into especially as intuitive soul language as I like that call it we can travel through this like there is times we can travel like we're traveling now most of us travel in our dreams um and then there's like really traveling like I can travel to por portals and places in Ireland very easily places I've been which is why I also love to travel because if I can touch base like really anchor and touch and be there then I will never lose that, lose that. And it's not that I can't do it without ever being in a physical place, but there's something else that happens when you go somewhere and you go, hello, I'm here in the land, invites you in and you're gifted the medicine and the wisdom and that they show you. And there's a gratitude and a blessing and that you may go to help and heal and, and stuff and activate and start help wakening these places to sacred places, portals. That's a whole, like we could be here for how long, <laughs> Athena, like talking about so many things. I think things. that an hour. Mm -hmm. 
but there's so much that you said, you know, it's like when we can travel and, you know, touch down, it's like that, it, it, that remembrance of that space is activated within us. And it's not necessarily that, you know, we are separate of, but it's that, like you said, that remembering and reclaiming that we are also the earth. And so we can hold those portals within, you know, like you said, like a crystal, or maybe there's like a, a light code or something that comes in and that's your gateway to activate what's already within you with what's already on the earth. And something that Mary Magdalene, you know, when I was working a lot with her a few years ago, that that's what she kept showing me is our ability as these open channels to, we don't have, we don't have to travel. We can absolutely do this work in, you know, in our living room. But when we do, we're really imprinting that, that memory, the, the memory banks, banks, the Akash, the, the new codes that are activated, the, the Fey, like whatever messages are coming in, it, it's like really, really opening within us. And so I definitely have experienced that. And for me, like I, I went to the serpent mound and now I can instantly access that. And I also, there's a portal from the serpent mound and I didn't understand it all when I first started tuning in, but there is a portal, a watery portal, um, under the serpent mound that goes all the way to, um, just below the Hawaiian islands. And so it's like this, this, um, moo kind of energy, this watery energy, and it is a portal way. And so yeah, by me going there, I can now more easily access it than maybe what I had before. So there is, there is that beautiful connection that's made when we touch down. Well, and I also, you know, believe that, you know, we all have unique codings, right? Um, sure, we can access a lot of different things and places, but we all, like, you're drawn to certain things and places, at a certain time. And then we keep on shifting and growing as we access certain things and open up other gateways and portals for ourselves. Just like mine is connected to some other areas and places. Uh, I know that all of us, as we do this work, the feel called to go to certain places and do work, we we are creating the grid that connects around the world in different ways. Um, so with, with earth, with you know Gaia with and then also bringing it up through the cosmos and, and creating the bigger sphere and, and grid of all of it so trusting where we're called and what and why what medicine um like you have your beautiful medicine that's you know we have some similar things you and I but we there's also it's quite different um yet we can understand and we can understand there's this little there's like a parallel medicine that's running with it right but if there's also different paths um so i think that's you know, the more of us that trust those things and lean towards those going to places or wanting to learn more talking being brave talking about things that may not be um so far socially acceptable uh but you know that's breaking down too um we gotta trust that because we're helping we're doing the work to support that is and it's not paid it's not paid work it's it's work for us work for the land work for our guides work for the ancestors it's yeah and it's i think it's paid back through that unified field of of love right like we get to feel that we get to experience that and there's like a little bit of an excitement too when it happens like my, I'm a um, Sagittarius moon. So like, I love investigating. I'm also a projector one, three. So I'm all about embodiment and it, investigating. So sometimes it takes me like, I'll dig into something and I'll stay with it for a long time before I like, it all starts to make sense. But um, yeah, we're all unique in our own way. And we can, we can start to learn to access this and, and that, it, you know, bringing it more and more into the mainstream. Um, and the wisdom and the power and the, and like you said, the medicine of it all is so important. And it really does. It ripples out to everyone, you know, everyone, we become better people and we become of service, the land. And I think that's just so powerful. Yeah. The next thing I want to talk about, because we're talking about cosmic and actually when we're filming this, everyone, it's actually the seven, seven, seven portal. Yeah. So let's talk a little cosmic. Can we get cosmic? How sure. <laughs> you're like when are we not cosmic <laughs> let's go cosmic let's not forget about those little wee folks but let's yeah. go cosmic 
Yeah, we'll we'll bring it back. We'll bring it back around. Um, see again, this is my excitement. I just want to start talking. So so with the cosmic energies, what do you feel like? How how are they supporting your journey and you know your clients and things like that? How are you bringing in uh, the portals of the cosmos for people? Well, let's start with myself first. Um, <laughs> taking the time to integrate. Uh, with all the different energetics that are coming through. I mean, if we're thinking just energetically cosmos, uh, the universe, like um, those energies that are shifting, coming in, upgrading, sh aligning us into new awareness, higher frequencies. There's a lot of work, work right now. I think we're all individually doing for what whatever is next. And um, I would say over the last few years for working with individuals is, is teaching, helping them feel and connect to this bridge, to this portal, to this gateway, to the cosmos. Um, because the more people can feel safe and open up and feel what the energetics are, the more they can be playing and receiving in the realms, like various realms. So they can also see who maybe they're more connected with when we come to the cosmic galactic realms of things. Um, for myself, when I'm channeling, um, doing guided um, journeys for them and also doing healing work, just allowing myself to work more and open up that we are bringing, that I'm a channel to help them with their new coding, their grids and that. So, you know, first I think we all get taught about more earthly 3d realm healing stuff um and then it comes to a point where you're opening up to more so for me it, it's been the last few years of just allowing trusting of opening up more and getting the lights the the sounds um the frequencies like literally seeing symbols and codes and various things coming in and helping that to integrate and be received to the client um and nurturing and sealing that in for them and talking to them about it. And um, so those are the different ways. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I, my group that I've been working with now for a while, like part of that is for them to open up more higher and higher and higher, but it's also teaching people come off the earthly realms of what we know is healing and teaching, right? It's like, open up a little bit more, open up a bit more, allow this cosmic energy to come through you and anchor it in and reconnect with with earth with god because so much has been about us anchoring grounding rooting anchoring grounding rooting it's like no 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 and then we went up here so much and then it was like oh no 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 you gotta bring the back you gotta bring it down it's got to be here it's got to be circulating right all around um so i think that's where for me it's um my personal work every day to to, to keep fine-tuning those energetics myself and helping people feel it, understand it, expand. Hopefully all that made sense because the more we go into this kind of work, the words don't connect. We we don't have, it becomes another language. It's a frequency in itself. Um, and so words just. And, and I had an interview, I think it was yesterday that I was doing for the summit where She's like, I, I just can't find the words. And I'm like, it's okay because we're at a space right now. I think that we don't always need the words. The frequency is felt. And so to trust that, like, it's okay. If we can't explain exactly what we're saying because we feel it, it's within us. And that energy will move on as it needs to for, you know, for the highest and best good of all. So I can absolutely relate to that. And I love how you touched on, you know, the trusting and opening up because when I, you know, I, and, you know, when I was little, I, I communicated and I spoke, you know, even visiting the cemetery and, and talking to the dead people, like I had that mediumship ability to open to receive. And then through my life, like so many of us, um, you know, we kind of shut that down. And then I opened back up like 2018, I really started to open back up more and more and more. And then something happened where I got really scared. Someone else's ideas um, really started to... I was really feeding into someone else's perspective and instead of finding my own. And so it took me almost a full year to like reestablish trust and discernment within myself. And that really can happen to people, you know, like, and me 
as a projector too, it's like, I can see the other person and it can guide the other person so well, but it's sometimes so hard for me to see me. And so it was like this deconditioning of the way I have been my entire life and like understanding, oh, what is my truth? What are my connections? Like you said, what are my unique gifts, right? We, we can have similar pathways, but yet we all have our own like little antenna, right? That's connecting to the universe and the earth in whatever way. And so like trusting that you, and that builds the wisdom. And so I just want to share that for anybody watching, you know, wherever you're at in your journey, you may have had a, a situation where you're like, I, I can't trust anymore, but really it's because you have maybe given the power away to someone else or just questioning everything, which also is part of the spiritual process where you start to just like, what is my truth? What is my truth? And, and that's okay too. So yeah, just honoring the path. And I just wanted to speak of that because it's something that I've lived and it's something that's like, oh, wow. But all the wisdom that I've learned from that and I can feel, you know, the power um, sparking back up within me over these last six months, especially it's just like, and then of course, like you said, all the cosmic things, the solar flares, the electromagnetic fields that are happening, the Schumann resonance, everything that's going on, the stars aligning, like all the things are supporting all of us in that ramping up of energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, like it's, what I was saying, like so many of us were taught first about the human realm or the earthly realm of healing and the channeling and Gaia and, and meditation. Like it's here, even mediumship, us working with spirits, pass on loved ones. There's still this plane, uh, middle world beyond the veil, but still here and here. Right. And then we've opened up up here and then we go through all the the ups and downs, the freaking out, the, I don't know, the experiences with others, the doubting of self, the giving away the power. I think the giving away and, and the power and over trusting others that feel like they're the channel and they're so opened up and blah, blah, blah. And so I think we're going through, I see it still happening, but I also see where I know that I'm working a lot with people is for you to know yourself. And yes, we'll go through all those challenges and those experiences to help us know that. And when I see individuals, just this person said, and they're, and then them constantly asking questions outside themselves when they've already asked five other people and yet they're still asking the next person. It's like, you're throwing your power away. You're not you're not, not hearing it. You're not getting it. You're not embodying it. So getting people away from that shit, um, like get into yourself, know yourself. Yes. There's people that have lovely stuff that, that they're receiving, but what I really love is getting people into their power to see that they're freaking doing that. Stop that shit, get them empowered with what their gifts are and get them strengthened so that they can open up and go into the, it's like a, a channel when we say it's channeling because literally it's a channel that is going up and out into the cosmic realm where there is it's access not only to other dimensions and galactic beings and light beings and all those doors all those portals there if you're in the channel you can call in and open up whatever ones that are for your highest good to come and chat with you but then it's also if you go even higher and above you're connecting to the source of all source of all that you are the source of all that how we're all connected is this gateway that's there for all of us so i love teaching people to get into that space but then also there is this when you're in that space not throwing it away saying the palladians told me well the palladians and this guy you know and the blue man and the little wee man and the whatever whatever they say this they say this and it's like that's great Where's your discernment? Where's your wisdom that's coming in here that you know where, like, where that is a truth? And so if you're just pulling it down and then once, once again, throwing away your power to even hear, like here at the here, I wish I had a higher like screen here, here guys up there. Um, and like having more of a relationship because it's, and it's the same here on this, you know, when we're talking with spirits here. We're talking about the earthly realms of spirits too, which the Fae are in, the nature spirits are in, um, the animal spirits. They're in the more the, the lower world 
earthy lower world, but we got to do the same with, with above, right. With the cosmic, cause really it's all connected anyhow, above and below. And it's all this beautiful, beautifulness. Um, but getting people really to have relationships and how do you bring it back here now? Because there's a reason why it's not light and shows and doing television shows and writing books and having a thousand followers and blah, 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 because you could access and talk to blah, blah, blah. It is, there's a reason where we're learning and this is opening is so that we can have this bridge to come back down here, here, but also have the bridge from below with all the access of that wisdom and bring it here so that we can ripple it out into the world we want. I mean, this is why it's all awakening so loud right now, but there is a lot of stages right? A lot of healing, a lot of things. And I would say even as a healer and a guide and all the things I do, you know, I'm kind of wanting to work more with the people that are so many steps beyond, but yet kind of get it, kind of feel it. So I think these conversations that we have at beautiful summits like this, it gets people hearing and feeling going, what? Or at least that's my, or, or my hope, your hope, right? It's like, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. And absolutely. the ones that are already here going, Oh, sister, I love you. Yes, I feel you. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think here we are. Yeah, and it brings us together, and it and it really helps us to find solutions. You know, and what, what you're saying about you know bringing that information, you know, with it's it's here for a reason. And what are you going to do with it? And how are you going to you know shift your life, make your life better? How are you know the messages coming forward like? You know, oftentimes I'll sit and I, I do a lot of the automatic writing. Like that's one of the best ways for me to channel information is just start writing pen to paper. And so much will start to downpour, but it's like what here really resonates. What here is, is, you know, what can I use out of this to, to be of service to humanity and to the earth. And so I think that there's also a responsibility in it. Right. And, and being that, that um, heart centered leader or that way shower or whatever where you know there are all the obstacles there are all the ups and downs but we are tapping into our discernment which is through the heart and we are tapping into that wisdom field so we can make shifts for a better world i mean that's that's the message i keep getting is like this is bigger than just you it's the entire world and it's the entire galactic the universes it's all realms all worlds and so you know we get to be part of that and it's it's such a beautiful journey there are some shitty times <laughs> and there are some things you know because we are we're integrating the spirit into our everyday body like never before well yeah. well maybe back into like first civilization right like we speak of lemuria and Mu, where we were fully integrated spirit bodies less less human less um earthly realms right we were more of a fluid kind of state but you know we're now in this physical body and we're anchoring that divinity in to us and it's moving through us and so i'm glad that you're you're speaking of that too because i i totally feel that and that's a lot of why i do this and so i kind of want to start we you kind of spoke of this a little bit but when you actually hear the term womb oracle what does that stir within you that's a really great question because I've been asking myself, okay, she's doing the summit and there's this womb oracle part. part. <laughs> what does that mean to me? How do I meet this part that I have a feeling is somewhat different than maybe your path, but yet there's going to be a connection. So possibly, right? I don't know. I don't, I have never, you know, I haven't heard your, your, your take on what that means to you in a real, like, you know substance so for me what does that mean for me is <sighs> so I'm going to give you what I'm seeing and feeling is that into ourselves into our souls into our wombs there is this cosmic space it is a portal in itself and we are that portal and I may talk about us going here and here but it's in this space in our womb space Space, in our soul space that is this gateway of wisdom and it's all there and it's nurturing it but it, we also have I feel you know when we say womb we you know there's this medicine within the woman the medicine of coming back to Gaia the medicine of the mother 
And when we go above and we go below, we go within, there is that mothering, nurturing space that it all comes together. And so there's, you know, we become the oracle, we become that space, we are that space. And I think it's this responsibility that we have to nurture it in whatever our medicine or language we have for it. But that's the sense I get and feel when, when you know, womb oracle, it's a beautiful title. It's not one I've used, but it's one that is, I am. Yeah. Yeah, and we I are. Love, and I just want to say first, you gave me goosebumps when you were saying that because it was so beautifully said and I could feel the transmission coming from you in that now moment. Um, and it's funny because here I am thinking, oh yeah, womb oracle. Like that's just something, you know, that's like, yeah. And people that are joining, they're like, I've never heard that term before. And I'm like, did I just make something up? <laughs> but it's just something that came so naturally to me. Like that's what it is. And for me, it's, it's very similar. It's like, you know, we think of the oracles of the past where they were, you know, directly channeling through their clear cognizance. They were channeling the divine through that, um, you know, those higher chakras. And they were really some even taken over from spirit and things like that. They were being able to receive high levels of information. Um, and then they would, you know, give it out to the people, however they needed to do that. But when I think of the womb oracle, it really is that embodiment, right? And my, my term of this year is embodied expansion. And so when I think of the womb oracle, it is embodied expansion. It is anchoring in the codes of divinity. It is anchoring in activating that God source spark that's already within us, within our heart, within the womb. And it brings in the creation codes because the womb dissolves, right? It's death and life. It's the whole rebirth process. It's, it's transformation. It's transmutation. It's, it's, um, you know, really being able to create and no longer creating from a space of fear or lack. But when we really truly embody that energy of who we are, that source light of who we are, like we are creating from the original bliss codes is what I call it. It's the, it's the space of ecstasy and passion and creativity from love and joy and passion and how we can really start to, you know, hold those codes in our body. And we tend to our bodies differently. We tend to the temple differently. We, we share with more of an open heart and an open mind. And I feel like, you know, even the messaging that we're getting, isn't so mm, staticky. It's, it's more clear. It's that direct access to source. Like you had mentioned earlier, right? Our source light, we are directly accessing that. And so that's what I feel. It's this embodiment of that Oracle through the creation codes. Yeah. <laughs> All of that. Anyway, I, I also see it, you know, I, I see it. So since you've asked me, it's like, I see such this portal though that is there within us that really if you look through it it goes to the stars it goes to everything it's like if I drew a picture of a woman and I would draw within the womb space the cosmos and knowing knowing my own journey of what that looks like you know I know that connects all it connects to here to earth to like the whole cycle and you said the embodiment, it's an embodiment. It's the holding of the container of it. And it is a cauldron in itself. And yet it's not a, I, I feel like it's a, not a, a heaviness of embodiment of holding a container. It's caretaking this space of our soul so we can be open to the access of all, which is the Oracle, right? the oracle of all of, of that wherever it's coming in divinely and I think you know when I say I do write-ups and that about what's the work I do what's my mission it's always about helping people to in, be embodied empowered to reclaim and call back their soul essence and it is that that womb space cauldron oracle 
like all these different beautiful words were given right in us it is bacon it's woman beautiful. yeah the medicine woman the shaman right because they say that the the first shamans were actually the females right um and so yeah there's so many different words and terms that we can put on it but yeah i i know and so I'll kind of go into the next question. Why do you feel like that's rising? The the space of the oracle and the and the shaman and the medicine woman and those archetypes that we see. Why do you feel like that's rising at this time? For the fact that we are going into different times, everything is is once again becoming thinner. Uh, things are not hiding. Uh, we are holding the capacity of this to to receive these solar flares these light codes these everything that's happening is helping us in our dna into our space our mind our energetics it is the time and it is just is the time uh, that we are here and it's been happening for many 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 years we're you know we're to get here to this space and return to the oracle type energetics which is our wholeness our fullness and we're seeing beyond matrix we're seeing beyond lies we're seeing beyond the illusion so when we do all that work and we see all that's left is us and this divineness and this connection so as that all crumbles which it is it's it's crumbling we get to see us we get to see each other we get to see beyond we get to see the spirits and the guides that are always been there and the ones that are going, no, we're really here now. It just, yeah. yeah. We're just I have tears. I'm going to say it just is, guys, okay? Like, <laughs> just I am feeling everything you're saying. Like, literally, I have tears and I'm not letting them, I'm not holding them back because I I feel all of that so deeply. And it's so beautiful the way that you you bring it forward. And I just love your voice. I know I've told you this before, but your voice is just like activating in itself. <laughs> so, okay. So I know we, we've kind of, we went kind of full circle here, but I want to talk a little bit more about like the Fae and, you know, do they have any messages for humanity at this time? Or is there anything else that you want to speak of to our little our little fairy friends and also big they're not all little <laughs> they're not all little and you know and I feel like you know we for us for this talk we I mean before we talked about dragons and we talked about portals there too and the sacred sites so it's all blended in am I an expert on fairies no I'm not you know how there's some people that are real experts on fairies but I've had my experience in many different ways obviously since I was a kid you know I've had that experience and then more going into even my time in Lilydale. I'm just going to give you my bit of my, if anybody doesn't know what Lilydale is in uh, New York, um, it's called Lilydale Assembly. Go check it out. It's a spiritualist community. And they actually, I mean, it's a hub. Spirit knows go, to go there because it's a whole bunch of mediums there. It's beautiful community on a river. And they got this beautiful forest and they have a fairy forest. So I've played in the fairy forest there in my late twenties, early thirties, and then being in Ireland so many times, you can't help but be around fairy energy, fairy trees, fairy land, fairy portals, the people talking about the Fae, talking about like, I've been to Ireland quite a few times for Beltane and for Samhain and like the we folks and what you do and the traditions, like it's, it's all there. Um, and so what, when you said, what message would they have? Cause I invited them in to be with me. I invited the land and the portals and things that I've connected to in Ireland and been honored to have had some interesting connections of portal time. Um, and so I'm, I hear right away some messages from them. One about time that just came in really quickly just right now. They want me to talk about time. Time is different in the world. Very different. If you follow anything with fairies, I mean, you can lose years and things like that. It's just time is different. It's we're feeling that here. So they're, they're bringing medicine and, and wisdom to help us with the 
letting go of man-made time and how it's shifting. The other thing when you first asked, what I heard right away from there was, okay, so they have, like, they have sass. They have like, I can't help it because this is literally, because they all have different personalities. There are different kinds of phase out there. They're like, there's a whole thing. If you want to, this one's coming in. We need to get our head out of our asses and remember, remember to have some freaking fun. Like they're just like, like we need to loosen up. We got to break out of the bullshit stuff that we put around us. We need to get into this magic again. And they don't say that word lightly. And we've put so much on the word magic, right? But we need to get out of our own freaking way. And we need to lighten up and we need to have some fun. So there's that one was like, which was a different energy that was coming through, but he's standing right there. <laughs> um, And that other lighter note that was coming in kind of like, but by different kind of energetics is there's a two, there's one that they're talking about having the respect and the discernment of things as we, we do go in, just like when we spread out into other learning, other cultures here in our 3d world to remember to have learn and open up and have to give and, and to play with them in their culture too, and their, in their ways and to be open. And for us to start doing that in different realms in different ways not just what we've taught here about how we teach uh, or how we treat each other and different, like I said, different cultures and, and various things. We got to start actually opening up to this, their world and other worlds, the mystical worlds, as we would call them. And um, yeah, the play, there's just this, we got to be silly and have fun and get it. Like I, I see a lot of like water right now, like light with water play. I love that. I and like, it reminds me of an experience I had um, about a month ago with a water nymph and this beautiful energy that was sensual and sexual, but like also very playful and like so fun. And I think what you're saying, it fits so well with this womb oracle, because as I see it is, it is rebirthing these creation codes, which isn't all serious. Yes, we can be fierce. Yes, you know, we can be loving, but it's also this play it's this creative expression of our true self and that's our inner child and the fairies and like, and how we can reshape our world, not just from like hierarchy and all the structure and all these things. And, you know, it's like, like you said, let loose a little bit, open up, laugh at yourself for God's sakes. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we can take ourselves so dang seriously when it comes to healing. And so I love that they're, they're bringing that message because that's something that I've been feeling and, and witnessing within my own journey as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, this, okay, two things, one reminder of the diversity, like there's a diversity with the fairies. There's a diversity with the dragons. There's a diversity with spirits that are still here, like just beyond the veil in the middle world. There's a meaning different levels, different things, but we see that remember to what we see and learn here in our, in our 3d world with everyday act, everybody's different. Every there's all these different things. We got to remember that as we open up to other worlds, there's that too. So be wise to that, know thyself. And just when you're talking about like playing in the water, uh, a little message is that when you see the little sparkles on top of the water, that is them. Like that is, they're like, that's some of us, Roberta, like, because <clears throat> they're wanting me to be diversity <laughs> and diverse. <laughs> but there is this light playfulness of looking and seeing things, right? And we think of kids doing stuff for the fairies and making fairy houses and putting berries and various things outside and shiny little things in the tree those are all great but they also want me to remind us about the not so great side of the little trickster energy and make sure you know you're behaving too because they can be tricksters they can move your shit around you'd be like where the heck did that just go like they will do those kind of things that they're known for that in ireland especially at halloween you know we we create lights and and pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns and turn up uh, you know 
with the little lights in and things like that. We're keeping the the good little folks, which are maybe aren't so good away. Like, you know, we have to give offerings. We have to do things. So there's a bounce of, of things and get to know. And so there's, as we open up through portals, through worlds, we have to know that there's just so much to also learn and be open to. And the more that we're open to here in our lives, those of us here, 3D world, that we can have love and compassion, be discerning of certain behaviors, we will do well um, when we start opening up to other worlds too, right? Hopefully that makes sense what I just said, because there's like, there's like, how do we live in this world and, and, and are in our power and discern and have healthy boundaries because we're going to need it with all the other realms as we open up. And and it is. And I feel like it's, it's the, the veils or whatever you want to call them are thinning so much these days. It's like literally driving down the road and you're getting these glimmers or you're, you know, you're like seeing, you know, you're going into the grocery store and you're like seeing their soul essence, you know, it's like that can happen. And so, yeah, and I, I really respect that you brought up that whole, um, you know, different realms have different energies and, and where do you want to play? And, you know, it's okay to, to be like, you know what, that's not really my thing. I'm, I'm going to go here. Some people are really drawn to working with the, the angels. Some people want to work straight with source. Some people want to work more with ascended masters. Like everybody's going to be a little bit different. And just like you said, to honor, respect, use your discernment. Um, and know that you can always say no, like we are sovereign, we can say no, like that is our power. And so, you know, feeling into that and, and also listening to your body when you're channeling, when you're in that, when the, you're in a journey, like, are you feeling, you know, expansive? Is there no doubt, no question, right? Like you just have this knowing it's okay, you're safe, you're good. Or is there some hesitancy? Is there something else? Because even sometimes it's our own our own conditioning through this lifetime and in what's good, what's evil, you know, movies and things like that can bring in all sorts of distortions for us. You know, there's all <laughs> sorts of mind control that's happening in the media. Let's face it. It's happening. We see it all the time. And so you have to really use that discernment to go what's best for me now. And what's really my truth and feel into the body. Cause the body is going to respond how you, how, what's best for you in that moment. And that doesn't mean that you can never work with that energy again, but until you can really master and feel safe, like it might not be always good to go explore some of those places because you can get tripped up into the loops and patterns and hooks. Um, that that's real, that's real. And that can, um, you know, kind of take your journey back a couple notches. You know, it's funny, they're, they're very chatty right now, <laughs> about, <laughs> you know, about, um, here's the thing, you know, people go traveling, say to Ireland is one of the examples, right? And, or, you know, in Scotland, various places that have fairy pools and they're, you know, they're known for their fairies. <laughs> it's still tangible. The, the people, the locals talk about it. They honor the Hawthorne tree. They like, there's things you don't do because a Hawthorne tree is honored and considered a path for anybody that doesn't know this, a pathway, gateway, um, it's a fairy tree, gateway to those worlds, those realms, also ash trees can be too, and a, a farmer will do his whole land uh, around a hawthorn tree, and various things, and there's fairy rings, and fairy forts, and burial mounds, like, I mean, know your stuff, so the thing, what I'm hearing about is, you know, um, and I've seen this, <laughs> witnessed myself, these things when I've been in Ireland many times is this you know this oh this sounds really cool I'm gonna go and do this I'm going to tie prayer ties and put things hang sparkly things in the trees and then they're killing the trees they're not learning how to respect the space and the place around the tree or the tree itself or these places that they feel as though are these portal gateways um you don't they're saying you don't just walk into someone else's house do like when you see oh that's a really nice house I, I think I'm gonna just walk right in you don't just go to someone's property and start planting and doing things and putting stuff on their garden you don't right it's the same thing have discernment and and that and respect because even though you may not see it and fairies may sound really cool um and we could go into more than fairies but um Zahid, right? We can go through to so many other things. We don't, um, 
we need to learn and not disrespect that because there could be, you know, if you went into someone's house, you're going to be in trouble, right? Well, they're not going to take it very lightly. <laughs> Parents are knowing that if you're not respecting certain things, you can have bad luck, misfortune, like all these things. This is why farmers won't do certain things. And, you know, with certain fairy uh, mounds and trees and stuff because they don't want the bad luck you don't want to just take things um uh, that are there been placed there and take it you don't like there's certain things and you want to ask for permission so they're just very that we have to have that respect about each other and each other like just because they're different than us right but you know i just heard just because they're different of us but are they in the cosmic are we not part, like, if we are wise enough to know they are them, we are them. If we go back, we're all connected. If we can go to that source. And if we do know that, would we not respect more and learn more and have the wisdom? Oh. Would we not be the oracle of that on their behalf? Goosebumps. And, and yeah, I was definitely feeling so much of what you were saying because, um, you know, I, I don't have strong like roots when it comes to like ancestors and family. Like I'm very like, I don't really know my ancestors or family. And so like, I didn't, I was never really taught like how to be respectful of other like energy. Like I had to teach that myself kind of like, it, it was weird because some traditions and upbringings can be like, you know, you got to respect, like, this is the, this is the chain of command or whatever. But like, I had never really experienced that. So I always had that curiosity. My, uh, I like to blame it on my Sagittarius moon, but really it's just my curiosity. Like, I, Oh, this is here. Let's go see this. And then I'm like, oh, fuck. but through wisdom, through the years of me doing this, like I started to experience like, Oh, okay. I really do need to honor this. And, and we're honoring that relationship. And what's ultimately happening is like you said, we're honoring each other. We're honoring the earth. And so that helps us come into right relationship with all life. Um, and so I love that you said that because it's so important for us to have that respect. And as you're speaking, your little portal circle uh, mandala behind you, of course, is kind of moving with the fan or moving with the air conditioner. And so I was getting the Nagas, which are ancient um, serpent beings who were the portal protectors. And I felt like they just wanted to be expressed today as well, um, that, you know, there are people or beings that protect the portals and and you kind of said this earlier about us making these new grids right we're literally making a new grid around the planet we're we're doing that work now through our bodies and um okay now i lost it <laughs> now the fairies are playing with me <laughs> they're but, so excited right now thank you oh my gosh yeah yeah so so it's like that protective energy so there are some beings who are protecting those portals and then there's also us who are learning to protect those portals. We are those next guardians of that. And so as we learn to respect, to honor ourselves, to honor the earth, to honor the other realms, we ultimately are also teaching the youth, teaching the future of the planet to do that as well. And so we are the guardians um, making that shift. And, and I think a lot of it, you know, we're from North America, so, especially Americans, I feel like they're kind of greedy, me, 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 and we don't have like that rooted, um, you know, connection to the earth and that sacredness. And I feel like we're starting to bring that back. And I think that that's so powerful um, that we get to do that. And just this conversation is going to like activate that within somebody else, or they're going to just agree and be like, yes, of course, that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, some people might be like, yes, I already know that, but that's okay too. It's just us verbalizing it and having that support of all realms to be the stewards of this land to protect the portal ways to protect the earth to protect our children like is just amazing yeah exactly and it's funny that is a that is hide it's well not hiding it's per, it's over another portal <laughs> just so you know there's a portal behind it and it's actually <laughs> blocking the portal keeping the portal uh so that's funny that you're like talking about them like yeah there's a portal behind that yeah right 
Well, I can um, feel, feel that. I can see the shimmering happening. So I can feel that. <laughs> I mean, and it's moving because I you know I have a light fan in here going, but I'm like, yeah, there's a portal behind that. Um, because it can't be open all the time, that what's behind it. And you know, they we are like they are teaching us when we see these portals, when we learn to connect in different ways with there's so many. We, we just happen to be talking about a few things here, and I'm sure others on your summit are talking about lots of different things um we are being taught i know they're even reminding me you know there's places i've been in ireland that i won't i wouldn't just show anybody or talk tell where they are because there is a respect in uh you're a keeper of certain things but that <laughs> you go through uh a bit of a trial yourself through some of them and i i know for me I have been through with especially fairy trees and fairy realms. They've uh, given me the the experience of one of their particular really portal powerful one and and it wasn't for help that came in to help pull me out of their portal. <laughs> they just wanted to give me a taste of what that actually felt like and the experience how. You, you don't want to play around fairy portals. I'll just tell you, tell you all that. You don't, because there is a time thing there. You have to watch because you can be stuck and lost. And so you have to, those of us that do this, where, you know, we go through a little bit of trials with with them wanting to put us through trials and in, in, of things. So we can come back and have that experience and share that and have the wisdom then of the experience. <laughs> Yes. Right. And so this work is feel when you feel called, you you go and you do this work and um and, and you trust in that. And um just like life, all of us here doing the work we're doing, all of us healers and teachers and spiritual guides, activators, we go through all of our trials and tribulations and we still are. And it's on an easy road. But what makes it easier is when we have conversations like this and trusting that we're all connecting more easily together and seeing each other now. And I just want to add, you know, one thing that I, you asked me, when am I doing these days and how am I helping? But one of the things that has been really activated the last few years for me is sending the light. When I get new activations and codings and that, uh, and that feeling, that embodiment, something hooking up. I send that light back up and I connect it with those of us here because I know there's many others. I can feel others going through it. And so now it's coming back up into a grid all around to go, I'm here. I know you're here too. Because I think the more we feel and see that as we're going through our stuff, especially now, and we bring it back up and we connect it with each other and we just know and feel like it's an open it's an opening of awareness that there's many of us right now, like we're waking up, doing our work. There's so many coming online, as you kind of would say, and just expanding, feeling that out and putting, I see literally this, this light beam coming up from me, connecting to others going, hello, I'm here with you. You're here with me. Because I think we more we build that, the more it's helping in different ways. I love that so much. And I know that I've, I've experienced that. I don't always do that as a, as a practice, but I love like incorporating that. I think that's amazing. Um, and the other thing that was coming forward as I was like typing up the little intro for the summit was, um, you know, like we're always talking about connecting to our soul, but we're really connecting to our oversoul. So as you're sending that light, we're literally connecting to our soul family origins, like that soul family that that monad whatever you want to call it like all of us that are coming from that fractal like we are coming down and in, in our own individual selves and so you sending that light you're literally like feeding the oversoul um with what you're doing like right you're a transmitter you're transmitting both you're receiving and you're transmitting and so i just i saw that as you were speaking so i wanted to just say yeah we're knowing our soul but we're remembering our oversoul and all of the beautiful people along the way that are here doing it in their own unique way so yeah. thank you for putting a voice to that okay. thank you <laughs> yeah yeah well so okay i'm going to go through my questions i think we pretty much asked 
a lot of it. We, I just love our conversations because we can just talk forever. <laughs> I know. Okay. So let's go. Um, what are you working on and how can people find you? I'm working on the expansion of letting spirit and divine and my oversoul and everything in me. Show me the new way. <laughs> Let's be freaking serious about that. Um, there's a lot of undoing and listening and listening of what the next is. Like I could go through all the things I've done, all the things I am, all the things, blah, blah, blah. But there is something different. And so the difference right now is me doing a lot of the work integrating for myself and trusting and trusting and trusting. There's a lot of freaking trust right now and how this is going to feel and trusting that the work I'm doing right now, this kind of conversation is us doing work right now. Um, there's something new. So I do know I'm going to be, there's this thing called the soul ascend, which I've talked to you about, but it's, it's going to happen. It's going to, at some point going to happen in the divine right time. Right now, I feel like it, it's maybe going to be Samhain to Beltane and that, that crone winter, earth, you know, uh, where I gather in women like us that really needed a space together to go deeper, to go higher, to go, to, to go just, to, you know, how do we do it together? Um, and in the meantime, this summer, I'm just playing. I just, you know, I just opened up a, like a four journey through July and August, come and journey with me. I'm going to teach you some journey techniques. Let's go check out the fae world. Let's go check out the dragons. Let's go check out the medicine or nature medicine elements. And let's have fun and go there. Um, so I'm going to be bringing some of my shamanism, you know, methodologies and tools, but also an everyday journeying easy, how we connect and how, why, why do we need to work with our mystical animals and these portals and everything and beings and worlds and realms? Like what's the importance of it? It's not just flighty. So for me, that's part of my medicine. It's like bring in things that might seem lati da flighty into a very grounded here now. Like there's a bridge. I'm a Capricorn sun, uh, cancer rising with my lot of fieriness and my moon and everywhere else. And a lot of Sagittarius myself that wants to get out there and venture. So, but I got to have that, that bridge of things, right? And I think right now I'm just having deep conversations with people. I want conversations like this. Yes. It's work, even though, you know, we're, I think we're undoing. So I'm working on doing like, what the heck does money mean? <laughs> Income, wealth, <laughs> all this. It's undoing. And knowing that just because we don't, we need it. We know we're in a world right now still needing this. But the more that we realize the work we do every day with conversations, supporting each other, doing our meditation, our journeys, nurturing ourselves, whatever it is, that is the work and trusting that we are divinely all being looked after in different ways than what maybe we have been looked after. So I'm doing all of that. But I do I, hope people come and play in mystical realms with me through July and August, you know, for various reasons. I think we need just some fun and play. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. And then I have some clients that, you know, one-on-one -on -one, they'll reach out and they do coaching, mentoring, spiritual director um, kind of work with them. Um, so how do they get a hold of me? The best is to go to robertarobbins.com. All my contact is there in my website. And of course, I can be found social media wise. Pretty much a lot of them, the main, the main ones. <laughs> oh God, I could go into a whole other conversation. <laughs> really? What what? About oh, yeah. money? Rapping? Yeah. Unwinding? Yes, because I'm the same thing, you know, like it's like, and I know that our world has shifted, you know, since 2020 and everything, people were stuck at home. And so it's like, for me, my business like skyrocketed. It was like, whoa. And now it's like, what am I doing? <laughs> and so this summit was actually part of that because there was a time where I was putting so much pressure on my business and myself and money. Like I need to pay this bill. I need to, you know, and as a newly single parent, I'm like, oh my God, there's so many responsibilities right now. Like, how am I going to do this all when I know in my heart, like this work is important. And so I, I just finally said, F it, fuck it, fuck it. 
I am putting on a summit and I'm calling my people that I love and I want to have conversations and I don't care what comes out of this. Like I'm doing it because it's lighting my soul up. I freaking adore all of you guys so much. And I respect each person who's on here. And so it's like, you know what? No, I'm letting go of any attachment to what this could or could not bring. I'm going to try to unmask as much as possible and just be myself and, and be like, you know what? This is the new way. This is that ultimate trust that what needs to be delivered will be. What I also need to receive will be. What you need to receive will be received. And, and just trusting in this and, and also knowing that we're building a community in this way too and, and reaching more eyes. And so, yeah, that's that's kind of the whole thing that I'm doing with this. It's like, you know what? I got to let go of strings. I, I You know, I had to get a part-time job and, you know, like that's real life. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that part of, of business and how there's ups and downs and the world is changing and there's a lot of fear and there's, you know, still a lot of greed and there's a lot of lack mentality, but there's also this other energy that's coming in with that, that womb Oracle that I like to call it. It's like that embodied expansion of those pure creative codes, which isn't attached to any outcome. It's attached to love. It's attached to the frequency of joy. And so how can we bring more of that in? And so I'm so glad that you spoke of that because that's real life. That's real. And it's there's real. a lot of people in the spiritual coaching industries, not everybody, but there are a lot that I see that are struggling. You know, they're not getting clients or they're not, and they're, they're trying to still kind of go off this old um, coaching or this old marketing strategy where it's like, that's no longer working. And it's like, we got to stop banging our head on the same wall and step back, wipe the blood and go, what's lighting me up? And how can I bring that into this world? Yeah, exactly. The old shit is not working. It's just not working. And so it's a great undoing. It's an undoing of our own systems, a letting deeper, let it go, let it go, let it go, letting go. And trust, trust, trust. I mean, we've heard this shit. I <laughs> say shit. I mean, it's good stuff. Um, but now we're like, are, do, you, do you really know what? And some people are still really holding on and trying. And yes, it's hard when you see some other ones are like, wow, they're, they are doing that. And I can't do that. But they seem to be doing it. But God, I can't do that. I can't even go there. Can't do it that way anymore. There's more of us that are are seeing that and feeling that. And yes, we are having some hard times, especially financially, especially where's our clients now? Who are our clients now? I was literally saying this this afternoon to myself, like, who, where the frick are even my clients at? I don't even know. Like I have all these people and I chat with them, whatever, but I'm like, they're not really even my clients anymore. Like, I don't know where my clients are. Or it's like, where's my people? But I think the more the people were working with this, like, you know, conversation. So anybody that's on the summit or people watching the summit, let us all reach out to each other if there's this frequency and the saying like, hey, hi, this is what, you know, we're just, let's build our connections and know that we're there together and that we are possibly struggling for a very difficult time, but we're making away for something new we we are we are it okay i'm gonna stop talking all right i no, i love it i love our conversations and this is this is real this is real this is raw this yeah. is not built for people <laughs> welcome yeah. to my and, there, and let's de debunk and you know move away those illusions which is all what's happening um is I can also say, I talk to a lot of other individuals myself. They're in the healing, coaching, mentoring, all that field, this, this field, the entrepreneur field. And they're not, they're like, I'm not bringing money in. I'm, I'm really like, I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah, it, a lot of people. So, you know, I have people say to me, oh, you look really busy. And you thought this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I'm busy. I'm busy with lovely things that I wanted to be doing right now. It, it's not, it's not what they, you know, people think if they see you out there doing summits, right? Oh, she must be like, no, not necessarily just yeah. because I might be having a beautiful group where we're doing lots of things over there. Or I'm, 
I'm doing that. It's like, take it at value for what it is, not a scheme to like get the money or get the clients. You're having the summit for the pure joy of bringing people together. I do my Cosmic Earth Weaver group for the pure joy of like bringing people together and sharing medicine and wisdom and, and build it. Like, it's just that like, as simple. There's no trickery. No trickery. Like this is realness of life. But we're get, we're being we have a roof over our head. We have a bed to sleep on. We got food in our tummy. We mm-hmm. got people that care about us and love us. These are very important things. So when I think like, you know, one of one of the um little just little messages that came forward as I was writing up, you know, and feeling into this summit was that we remember together, we heal together, we rise together and we thrive together. And I feel like these conversations are doing just that and and that we can move beyond where maybe we are where we're feeling a little uncertain or even you know materially not provided for as much as maybe once before but that times are shifting and that the shift will happen everything happens in cycles and so to trust it so if you have to you know change gears get a part-time job do you know like do what you need to do to provide but also having that trust and knowing like I also know that there's more that wants to be birthed out of me. And it's just kind of this weird waiting period. But I've been having, like you said, this summer, you're going to have fun. Like, that's what I'm feeling. Like I'm doing ceremonies and I'm, you know, gathering people together and I'm um, talking about doing some like little mini retreats and stuff like that. Like that's fun for me. Like, and I don't, I don't really care what exactly comes out of that except for community. Like, and I just feel this, this need to gather and sit and share stories and to share our magic and our medicine and our healing. And, and I think that that ultimately will help us all thrive. Definitely. Definitely have, we need to have fun this summer. We need to just do the things that are bringing us joy. We need to build community. We need to trust all those, all those things. Yeah. And so much fun. And don't forget, I just want to say this too, because my fairy are very like chatty, chatty right now. Yeah. Well, and they also get into the, like the pleasure, like the pleasure of life, like the fun, the pleasure, like the pleasuring of your body, like you're eating food and you're nourishing yourself and really enjoying it. Or maybe it's massage oil on your body, or maybe it's sex, or maybe it's self-pleasure, like, but like adding those in too, because that also activates a whole other level of this creation codex that's coming forward and so it's like all of that the whole plethora of love and and bliss and ecstasy and pleasure like it's all super important right now especially as we're moving into well when this launches it'll be going into lion's gate so this is the mary magdalene feast day to the 27th which is the beginning of lion's gate energy so that energy is just coming forward and i just want to also say one last thing here is like a couple months ago, as I was just kind of tuning into the galactic energy, the message I got is that we are going to be um, going galactic by the eight, you know, August 8th, Lionsgate, it's going to be one of the biggest ones that we felt in a very long time. And literally, it's like we're anchoring in our galactic family, and we're transmuting them straight out of our heart. It's not even like we're channeling them. It's like we are them. Like it's full embodiment of our galactic self. Um, so that's coming on. So maybe this whole transition is is that leading up to that energy. I, I don't know. Who's to say? And everyone I know has their own timeline and everyone will experience things a little bit different. And that might not even be their timeline. But for the people that I feel like are part of my oversoul energy is like, that's what's happening. We're going galactic. We're going Care Bear yeah. Stare galactic wise, yeah. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> And remember, like what we've been saying, like what you've been saying this whole time is it's about embodiment. So it's no longer flighty outside here, like giving our power away. It's fully embodied our galactic self, like not our just galactic guides, our galactic self, like it's stepping forward through the heart. We're meeting our brothers and sisters as them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's so funny, you're talking about the, the pleasures of life and all I get, all I'm seeing and getting now is like, get drunk, almost like a party, get drunk on literally a raspberry. Like I literally see a fairy right now on like almost drunk on fairy wine, like raspberry wine or something like get oversaturated 
in the pleasures of of things of summer of abundance and just so can have some fun very well, have to have a glass of wine <laughs> everybody well, go have a glass of wine after wherever you're listening to this one. i know okay Toast okay one, berries. one more thing i promise one more thing <laughs> i love you so much um the energy that so I, I connect deeply with Hathor. I have a lot of the Hathor codes, and she keeps bringing in the fairy um, energies. And I'm like, how is Hathor and the fairies? You know, how is and it's like it's all interconnected. But it's that that pleasure, passion, the drunkness, right? The celebration, the play, the music, the arts. Like it's all connected. And so I just feel like she wanted to be presenced as well um so you can connect with that energy as you know she was you know kind of in that realm of like venus energy and aphrodite energy where it is this like sexual energy that just exudes off of them because they know who they are they know and trust in themselves they trust in spirit they follow that inner calling and i feel like we're all stepping into that hawthor kind of energy with this conversation <laughs> so yes go have fun play drink get drunk i had like three glasses of, of wine the other night and i was like Ooh. but it was fun i don't drink very often but when i do <laughs> yeah, exactly but yeah, so I just want to say thank you so much for joining and being here and saying yes. Like I said, I always love our conversations. And one day I will travel to Ireland with you because I feel that so deep in my womb, as I say it, literally my womb is like pulsating. <laughs> so I can go. feel it you that go. it's going to happen. It's just that divine timing in, in as everything weaves together. So um, yeah, I just want to- We're in, the, in so between. Much. We're allowing the new weaving, right? There's something coming. We're in a portal where like I literally was talking about that. I know we could talk forever, but Lily was talking to a good friend. I'm like, I'm in the in-between of something that's portal, right? And I really felt it today, which is 777, you know, the thing, but I'm like, it's not all there. I don't understand quite yet. We're in the unknown. There's glimpse of ahas moments, but we're in this. And when it all weaves, it's going to, we don't even know, but it's going to be divine. It's perfect. So Which of great. course we're gonna have our bumpiness. That's life. I'm yeah. not sugarcoating no bypassing like think positive and everything's gonna be freaking good for us. No, no, none of that shit. But we trust, we know we're doing all this work and we're being we know it because it is us. We just know it because it is us, it's in us, the divineness of where we're going, what's happening. It's gonna be good. And we're just in something right now. But look at even as we're in something, look at the beauty and the magic that's being created in the connection. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to check out the email. Her links will be in the email as well as in the description below. You can check out Roberta's amazing author offerings, her website and everything, and her Facebook group. I'll post below as well. So make sure to go in there. There's amazing free stuff all the time. She has guest healers and speakers that are in her Facebook group. Sometimes I, when the kids aren't here, I, I try to be in that as much as possible. Um, but yeah, it's a great place to be and to grow and to expand. And I just want to say one more time, thank you so much for being here. And I think you're amazing. Thanks too. <laughs> this has been lovely. Okay. All right. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.